Hey everyone, I'm gonna be posting a series of shorter, more digestible videos that are designed to introduce you to MRI in general with an emphasis on body MRI. This is going to cover the basic concepts that you need to know in order to understand and start looking at MRIs. We'll split the introductory videos up as follows. We'll start by reviewing some very basic MRI physics. So in this first video, we'll talk about how we get MRI signal. The video after will cover T1 and T2 relaxation and introduce how we differentiate tissues on MRI. Then we'll dive into the pulse sequences themselves, discussing key concepts like T1 and T2 weighting. We'll introduce fat saturation, diffusion weighted imaging, and sequences commonly used in body imaging like in and out of phase, which is very clinically important to understand. We'll also look at some normal MRI studies to review all of the sequences in a typical protocol and what normal looks like, starting with an abdominal MRI. Let's get started with some basic physics. This is gonna be far from a comprehensive review. We understand that everyone has a different physics background, so we're gonna assume no background. Also, apologies to the MRI physics purists. This is intentionally oversimplified. Simply put, the signal that we get and look at in clinical MRI comes from imaging hydrogen nuclei in water and in fat. These hydrogen nuclei, like in other subatomic particles, possess spin or spin angular momentum. And this spin gives the nuclei a magnetic moment. To put it in a simpler way, think of each hydrogen nucleus behaving like a tiny bar magnet with a vector illustrating the magnetic moment. In the absence of an external magnetic field, all of these tiny bar magnets are pointed in all different directions. And if you look at the net magnetization vector of any particular tissue, it would be about zero. There would be no net magnetization vector in any direction. In an externally applied magnetic field, however, like an MRI machine, the tiny bar magnets tend to want to align with the magnetic field. So in a tissue, you end up with more magnetization in the direction of the magnet. The tissue has a net magnetization vector in the direction of the main magnetic field as shown here. Let's look at an MRI machine. So a big part of this MRI machine acts essentially as a big magnetic field that is aligned down the bore of the magnet. And that's marked here as B0. The main magnetic field is down the bore of the magnet, which is also called the Z axis or Z axis. The strength of the magnetic field in clinical MRI these days is most commonly 1.5 or 3 Tesla. And this diagram shows these magnetic moments of the individual hydrogen molecules aligning with this field. Since the majority of them align, these add up to a net magnetization vector in the direction of the main magnetic field. When a magnetic moment is aligned in the field like we're showing here, this is considered a low energy state. Put more simply, the little bar magnets are naturally pulled in this direction along the z-axis or z-axis it's easier for them to align with the field than to oppose it. The z-axis, again, is the longitudinal direction down the bore of the magnet. So, how do we translate this into MRI signal? Next, we apply something called a radio frequency pulse, or RF pulse, that is designed to tip the net magnetization away from the z-axis. The RF pulse is essentially a smaller varying magnetic field applied at a specific frequency in a direction that is perpendicular to the main magnetic field. It's not really a radio wave, but instead it's electromagnetic energy with a frequency that is in the radio wave spectrum. 
A key point is that in order to tip the magnetization away from the z-axis, the RF pulse has to be at a frequency that matches the spin of what it's trying to tip down. For now, who cares about these details? What matters most is that the RF pulse tips the net magnetization away from the z-axis and into the xy plane. How much it tips away from the z-axis is called the flip angle. Here, for simplicity, let's say that this is 90 degrees for now. And again, with this 90 degree RF pulse shown here with B1, the net magnetization is tipped into the xy plane, again, perpendicular to the z-axis that we described prior. The RF pulse does two things. One, it tips the net magnetization vector into the xy plane, as we just showed in this diagram. And two, it also makes most of the hydrogen nuclei start to precess in phase at a particular frequency. Think of precession as like a wobbling motion or spinning of an object like a top. The particular frequency that protons precess at is called the Larmor frequency, which is calculated by this Larmor equation. The equation says that the frequency here, F, is determined by the magnetic field, or B0 here, the stronger the magnetic field, the faster it precesses in sync after the RF pulse. The frequency also depends on the nucleus itself, which is reflected in this term here, gamma, which is the gyromagnetic ratio. If that's too much for now, just remember that the RF pulse does two things. It tips the magnetization into the xy plane from the z-axis, and causes the protons to precess or wobble in sync in a particular or at a particular frequency. Another important point to realize is that we generally detect MRI signal in the XY plane with a coil, essentially a coil of wires. We know from basic physics that if we put any coil of wires in a varying magnetic field, this is going to create a measurable current in the coil. So in MRI, a net magnetization vector tilted into the XY plane, like we've shown on this MRI diagram here, if the detector was down here, we have a net magnetization ve vector in the XY plane that is precessing in the XY plane. So it's pointing towards, then away, then towards the coil. And that varying magnetic field is going to create a current in the coil, and that's where we get the MRI signal. Let's look at that in another way. Instead of looking at it in the magnet or on an MRI diagram, we can look at it on this XYZ Cartesian system. So again, the magnetic field here is in the direction of the z-axis, which is down the bore of the magnet. The net magnetic moment is going to be in the direction of the main magnetic field, shown here as a blue arrow. An RF pulse is applied at the right frequency and at a particular flip angle, here 90 degrees for simplicity, and again it's going to do two things. One, it's going to tilt the net magnetization vector into the xy plane, and two, the protons are going to precess in sync with each other, so the entire net magnetization vector is precessing in the xy plane as illustrated here. And as mentioned earlier, we detect signal in the XY plane with a coil detector. The varying field in the XY plane towards, then away, then towards, and as it precesses, is going to create a varying magnetic field that's going to create a current in this coil which is the MRI signal itself. So, this is all great. We understand how we get MRI signal, but the key of any imaging is to differentiate tissues from each other so that we can anatomically look at organs and detect disease within them. 
So, how does MRI differentiate between tissues? If you've made it this far in the video, I'm hoping you've learned something valuable. If you have and want to support the channel and have access to some exclusive content, including case-based resources, join our Patreon at patreon.com navigating. That's patreon.com navigating. In the next video, we'll cover how MRI differentiates tissues by discussing T1 and T2 relaxation and what a few commonly imaged tissues look like.